Hello everybody and welcome to my game week 9 team selection video. This is Pranali also known as Late Riser 12. Uh, I'm recording this on the Wednesday evening and uh, we already did a pod yesterday with uh, Zoff and Pras uh, which I thought was quite nice. So if you want to check that out, check that out and uh, we'll dive straight into my team selection. Before we go into that, I actually want to make a pledge and request to you guys to hit the like and subscribe button and uh, you know just show us some love because we're working really hard to get a lot of content and It'd just be nice if you could, you know, take a second out and uh, hit the like and subscribe button because it really helps us and we'd be really, really grateful as well. In case you want to hang with us or be a deeper part of the community, you can uh, become a member on YouTube or subscribe to our Patreon on patreon.com forward slash the FPL wire. And what you're basically getting is access to our Discord, in my opinion, which is the biggest benefit. We, we're doing a Q&A for our Patreon slash Discorders slash members tomorrow as well. So you get access to that kind of exclusive content. Zoft as a game week review every Monday with the stats tables as well. And you get a chance to win three Premier League kits every month. So there's a lot going on. And if you wish to indulge and involve yourself deeper with us and hang with us, because it's a great place. Because I don't think you can really have conversations about football on Twitter anymore. Or X as they call it. I think uh, a place like Discord is better suited to it. Right. What happened this week? Nothing to write home about. I, Ryan Gabriel again disappointed. That said, I'm not too worried because of the stat that I cited. 60% of the XGC that they've conceded so far this season, Arsenal, have come from games in which uh, they've been against, have come in games in which they've been down to 10 men. So I'm not too worried long term. This team and the clean sheets will come through. Uh, so we hold up. I feel like unless I need money, for a move and I can't remove it anywhere else from my squad, I'm happy to give Raya a go. Mikulenko came in, it was one of the... So in case you don't know, I last uh, week I did Diaz and uh, Trent to Ait Nuri and Foden. Uh, and actually this netted me 8 or 9 plus points because I would have played Trent instead of Miko and Trent got a 2-pointer, so I gained 5 points here. And I played Foden instead of Diaz. So I gained... Uh, Three points here? Yes. So actually I gained eight points, which is quite nice. Otherwise it would have been a miserable 25 pointer. So, you know, these these points add up. Actually, it was a part of my thinking because I was like, if I have Trent, Gabriel and Lewis, I'm not giving enough weightage to my belief in the Everton defense coming through because I do think they're value for money. And, and if you, in case you don't already notice, uh, the rotation between Ait Nuri and Mikulenko is beautiful. I discussed it on the team selection video last week as well. Check it out. All right, Foden didn't start and Pep is overcompensating for the lack of Rodri at the moment. But I am pretty certain he starts against Southampton because this is the kind of game he gives Foden a run out in. And if he doesn't start or if it looks like his minutes are dicey going forward, I've got a million and a half in the bank. And I will upgrade Foden if I need to. And I'll talk about my parts. This team, I currently have one free transfer and 1.3 million in the bank. But I've got five potential parts, which I'm excited to discuss with you guys. And I'm actually willing to know what you guys think. So you can comment in the... Uh, below the video and let me know what you think in terms of the path I should take or at me on Twitter or Discord or whatever. Palmer 2 point has been frustrating. Yeah. In the last two weeks, he should have had at least a goal. Uh, but uh, he's, he's, he's a little... Uh, he's been a little frustrating to watch in the last two weeks. But Newcastle, I think at home, should be a fixture that suits him. So fingers crossed and hoping that works out. boomer has got one of the best fixtures next week, especially because they're playing an Ipswich Town team without Greaves, without Tuanzebi. These guys have been important cogs of the Ipswich Town defense early season, and that's a problem. Roger, six-pointer doing the business. Absolute value pick at this price. Haaland with a two-pointer blank. That's said, I'm expecting City's output to open because, to improve, because Pep Guardiola is the best manager in the world, and things... He will figure it out. And they were a lot better once they replaced Savio and uh, Doku with Grealish and Foden. He just needs to stop playing Gundo, Bernardo and Kovacic and not play the better players. He needs to have a little faith in his team uh, and not be overtly controlling and defensive. And hopefully it's a game like Southampton is where he lets go 
and it does him well. I'm hoping that we see much from City tonight as well. I think Foden will start as well. I don't mind Foden starting tonight and playing 75, 80 minutes because Pep is a rhythm merchant. Like you, it, for him, it doesn't necessarily cool it that if Foden's played 80 minutes today, he's going to be rested for the next game. If he plays today, he does well. He starts the game against Southampton. That's how Pep works because the rest game for your first team should come after the game against Southampton, which is the Spurs game, which is the Carabao Cup. But Pep's already mentioned that he's going to play second team in the Carabao Cup. So that's the context that I want to add to you guys. Howard's two-pointer disappointing. They didn't show much when they were down to 10 men as well. And a lot of what I do with Howard's this week, he's my likeliest transfer out, depends on whether Saka's fit or not. If Saka's fit, I'm likely to keep Howard's. If Saka's not fit, I might be tempted to sell. That said, I'm more likely to keep than sell at the moment. DCL two-pointer, despite get clocking a what? 1.32 XGI. He's clocking big chance after big chance. And Wood has made up 20 points on him so far this season. But I'm hoping the reversal starts soon. Fingers crossed. Uh, Greaves didn't start on the bench. I had Nuri one pointer. Carvalho is potentially going to be a problem. I have a feeling he starts against Ipswich at home, though. Right, as always, lessons to implement. I have highlighted the lessons in bold that I want to talk about in this video. And uh, that's always be aware of multiple paths, paths and plan more so you know what you're losing out when you pick a path. So while I'm talking about the paths in terms of potential transfer, you guys need to tell me if I'm forgetting anything or losing sight of something when we're sort of future planning. And long-term trends when selling big players. Now Kai Havertz is actually a big player in my head now. He's uh, kept pace with Saka since the second half of last season. So am I jumping the gun selling a player like Kai? When his fixtures turn good in about two or three game weeks, he's nailed on. He's a minutes monster. This, am I overthinking it if I'm looking at selling Kai? Because if I don't sell Kai, I can't get Saka as well. So that's something that we need to talk about in terms of, can I get away by getting Kai and then getting another big hitter instead of Saka? We need to think about that in terms of structure. Uh, I A new thing that I've started on the video this week is talk about notes this week. Just a few things that have caught my eye that I have made a mental note of. And these are the few observations that are quite important to take note of. Uh, and this is just ob subjective opinion or objective fact. Liverpool defense is probably as good as Arsenal defense. Like I didn't actually, I forgot to mention it on the pod yesterday, but it's something I want to take note of. If you're in the market for a 5 million defender, why not Konate? The problem is because, not Konate, is because Liverpool's schedule is brutal right now. If he comes through the next three game mix well and doesn't get rotated in the league, uh, I am happy to chance upon Konate when the fixtures get better around game week 13. Uh, in addition to Trent, because now I'm coming around to the fact that in this control sort of mechanism, that they are playing under slot, their defense is probably as good as Arsenal's. So Trent is going to be a transfer in soon for me. By soon, I mean after the bad run of fixtures. I think in about six or seven more game weeks. Uh, and Liverpool defense is just great. Second note is Brighton defense is there for the taking. Like Newcastle should have scored three or four goals against them. And I like attackers from good team against a team like Brighton, I don't view it as a tough fixture for your attackers. I don't view it as a clean sheet fixture, but I don't view it as a tough fixture for your attackers. Love BJ, who doesn't? Uh, like Son came away with a goal, uh, but Brennan Johnson's positioning was insane. Like I feel like he's probably just the most obvious pick in this bracket at the moment because he's center forward more so than uh, Solanke. So my, my theory is that Solanke is better in control games and Brennan and Son are better in transitionally games. And Brennan is better, is is very good in control games too. So Brennan is just a good pick. Uh, maybe we haven't seen him in a control game while he's playing with Son. Uh, because the West Ham game, while you might think it would be a control game, it was actually a transitionally game. And it suited Don coming uh, deep playing in the hurricane role and then both BJ and Son had a fair amount of space in transition as well. So, but man, BJ, BJ is just a very good pick. At some point, I think I want to get him. But he's also competing with Garnacho. And why Garnacho is because in two weeks, United's fixtures are ridiculously good. So you need to keep an eye on that, which is why I mentioned keep an eye on United because I thought we did well, especially with Eriksen and Bruno playing in midfield. We've got two ball playing midfielders who are capable of playing through the lines. And I thought Rashford on the right, Garnacho on the left, and Hoyland Central just clicked as an attack. And I'm hoping we stick with this. I would like to see just a semblance of a regular team once and for all. And I think United... I don't want to get excited about United because they're the Jekyll and Hyde team. So we're inconsistent as hell, right? So we're good 
one week and we're terrible the other. So we'll see what we do with United. Right, this is the big hitter table. Um, you know what? Before I talk about the big hitter table, I actually want to talk about my team and my paths at the moment. So my option number one is hold Kai. And why will I hold Kai? Because Kai is the same as Saka. He's got tough fixtures right now, right? He's got Liverpool at home. Tough fixture. Newcastle away is an alright fixture. Chelsea away is... I don't mind Newcastle away and Chelsea away because I think they're decent fixtures for attackers. But after that, their run's pretty good. They've got Forest home, West Ham away, United home, Fulham away, Everton home, Palace away, Ipswich home, Brentford away. It's a good run. The question is, do I want Kai in this run or do I want Saka? And I, I mean, I went without Saka for Southampton at home and Leicester at home and I showed a pair there. Uh, so why am I wanting to go back on this structure at the moment? It seems like Saka is better or am I just being impatient after two sort of blanks? But that's because Saka wasn't playing. So TBD, he actually had better XG than Saka in those games as well. So maybe I just should stick with Kai. TBD, like I said, we want to see the performance there. But uh, selling Kai also enables a lot for me. And what does it enable? We'll talk about that further. So that's option number one. This is what selling Kai enables. Going Kai down to Strand Larsen or Vissa enables me to do Foden to Mo Salah next week. Now, I obviously bought Foden for a run. Now, Foden is the same as Haaland, right? So Foden has Southampton, Bournemouth away, Brighton, Spurs at home. I like I don't like Bournemouth away as a fixture for Foden, but I like Brighton away and Spurs at home. And I think Foden plays these games. I think these fast-paced transitionally games, Pep needs Foden. So even if he doesn't play central, he will need him as a winger in these games because I think Foden does well in, this sort of, in these sort of games as well. So there is merit to holding Foden. But if at all it seems like his minutes are dodgy after the Southampton home game, immediately after, Salah has a good run of three games. Brighton home... Villa home, South and I think Villa is a good fixture for attackers because Highline, Aston Villa, Emery, etc. So yeah, man. While they have a tough schedule, Salah's minutes are great. And I think he's a good captaincy option in game week 10 against Brighton at home where Haaland has borne Mata Bay. And especially if City continue to start disappointing. So this is a great path where I go... And then why Strand Larsen or Vissa both have great enough fixtures uh, at the moment. So this is another path, you know, that I have... And then, once I'm done with Salah, I can move from Salah to Saka after Salah plays Southampton away. So when Salah has City, I just get moving to Saka and then get Saka for this run. Because I've sold Kai, so the spot sort of opens up for me. So that's part number two. Uh, okay, wait, why am I going here? Sorry about that. Hit like and subscribe, guys. Mo could even be Son Saka and then I have more fun for a striker. Or if I can hold, or I can even just hold Foden. So basically, I'm buying an extra premium midfielder. Uh, I have 1.3 million in the bracket. So I think I can go up to Son anyway. I think I can go up to Saka anyway. I don't need to compromise uh, the Kai spot. Uh, I can do that anyway. So these are the sort of paths that I've opened up. I, if I go to like a mid-bracket striker, then I can afford any other premium as well. And then... Selling Kai has this benefit that it opens up Saka in this part. So, uh, and the other striker that I like is Rasmus. And why I mentioned Rasmus is because he's got a great run as This is the great run for United that I was talking about. Where they've got West Ham away and Chelsea home. Not a bad, not a bad couple of games for attackers in my opinion. We'll score goals in these games. So it's a good entry point for United attacker. After that, you've got Leicester at home, if switch away Everton at home. Then you've got Arsenal with tough fixture, then you've got Forest at home. So between 9 and 15, it's a great run for United attackers. And I think 11, 12, 13 is just superb for United attackers. We'll score goals in these games. So that's the thinking. I can go Rasmus down and then get Saka as well. So, so, so the thing is, do you prefer Kai plus Foden or Son? Or do I prefer Rasmus plus Foden or Saka? Or Strand Larsen plus Foden plus Saka? Or do I prefer... Strand Larsen or Vissa plus Salah. And I feel like maybe it's too early to commit to this structure this week. Because I could just want if Rasmus braces or gets a couple of returns and looks good and gets 80 minutes again. And I my belief that he's the first choice United striker is reaffirmed, then I might want La I might want Rasmus instead of Strand Larsen or Vissa. So maybe holding is fine, you know, because I can commit to a better structure. But the thing is, we'll talk about the thing. The thing is that Kai doesn't have 
the best fixture. They're playing against Liverpool. And we spoke about this earlier, where Liverpool are a defense as good as Arsenal at the moment. So, and if, if Kai is not playing with Saka, it's even worse. That said, he looked good in the Champions League game last night. He didn't get any returns, but he was in the center of the box. I thought Arsenal were better. Obviously, it was Shakhtar, so you take that opposition into consideration. But, uh, you know, if I replace Kai this week, I'm replacing Kai with... Uh, I don't want to replace him with Rasmus this week because it blocks me from the Salah move next week. So if I'm replacing him this week, I will replace him with either Strand Larsen. He's got 1.13 projected goals. Arsenal have 1. Point, Wolves have 1.13 projected goals. That's why I think it's a good fixture for attackers. But the Marcus think that guys, Arsenal have a greater chance of scoring goals compared to Wolves. That's why I think Wolves score more goals than Arsenal. That's the thinking. Or I get Vissa. But Vissa, Vissa's minutes could be dodgy, but it's just a great entry point for Vissa. Like, okay, again, you know, this is actually a theory we had when it came to lessons learned. And this is the lesson learned. Don't rush after long-term injuries. I don't know if you can call Vissa's injury long-term, but am I rushing into Vissa? And Kai's going to play against Liverpool. It's just about whether he's going to get points or not. So maybe I just hold fire on Kai and then decide what moves. Or if I want to move this week, I can straight up do Kaido Watkins. A lot of people are saying Watkins has a tough run of fixtures. I think except for Liverpool away, these fixtures are great for Watkins. Bournemouth home, Spurs away, great for attackers. Uh, then Liverpool away. Then Palace home, Chelsea away, Brentford, Southampton Forest. Now there's a part of me that thinks that I need to plan for Watkins in game week 14 sort of anyway. He's got Brentford home, Southampton away, Forest home. If you're going here, then why not start in 12? So that's a part. So many parts, man. And then I could ignore that and not have a stronger first 11, but can go for a deeper squad because I do have a problem here, which is Carvalho. And Christmas is coming. Winter is coming. It could be winter, Rasmus, winter, Hoyland, or it could be winter basis, the December Christmas period. Terrible joke, man. I don't even know how to time that. But it's all right. You can just laugh, pretend to laugh. Uh, Kai to a cheaper striker. And then instead of upgrading Foden to like a big hitter, I can upgrade Carvalho to Brennan Johnson or Garnacho or Rashford. And that gives me a rotation for Rogers, and I don't have to perma play him. And I can like deepen my squad. Do I want to deepen my squad? If I deepen my squad, it sort of blocks the premiums above Odin. It sort of blocks Watkins. So at the moment, I'm leaning towards having a stronger first 11. And I'll deal with Carvalho when I want to, because I think Rogers is still perma play, man. Except for Liverpool away. I don't have problems playing in Bournemouth home, Spurs away, Palace home, Chelsea away, Brentford home, Southampton. I don't have problems. In fact, I remember a lot of people had Semenyo and Rogers scored last week anyway. So he's good, man. He's just good. And he's further improving. So I don't, I don't have issues with that. So these are my parts and I'm confused. That's why when in doubt, do zilch. At the moment, it's where I am. But if Saka is definitely ruled out for the game against Liverpool, then I might think, that said, I'm not... Sure, which way I want to go with the striker position. If, if what I'll do is, to be frank and honest with you guys and to keep you guys updated, watch the comments below in the video. And whenever I make my moves, whatever they are, I will post it in the comments in the description below. And I will pin it. So if I'm making a move, that second I'll come to YouTube and let you guys know that I made a move. I think that's a fair deal. Right. Uh... Projected goals, yeah. We're looking good this week because we've got like players from the top three, four. I've, I've got two from City, 3.35. Got Palmer, 2.10. Uh, we don't have many Arsenal Liverpool attackers, which is kind of nice, which a lot of people do. Uh, Spurs have 1.95 as well, which is decent. And I think Palace were terrible against Forest, so Spurs could have some goals here. Brentford look great. I think my wife, Vice, might be Bumo or Palmer. Palmer, I trust Palmer more. He's more central. And uh, Strand Larson could get goals against Brighton. Yeah, I don't mind that. Uh, I'm very happy. I'm At the moment, I'm comfortable keeping DCL. Uh, just know that Anderson is injured as well. And Lukic might be injured as well. So it's, it's a sort of dismantled uh, Joe Pesci team. I'm talking about Fulham. So my, eventually, he needs to put the ball in the back of the net. But I'm not in a hurry to sell uh, Calvert-Lewin. And instead, I want to focus on upsidey moves with these big attackers big attackers because i feel like spending transfers there's i feel like trends 
I feel like spending transfers there leads to chasing triple, quadruple returns, which I don't think the cheaper guys are capable of, yeah, frankly. Also, there's a part of me that is wondering about starting Carvalho. Like, I feel like it's an easy game, and the last time they had an easy game, he played Carvalho as a 10. So instead of a 4-3-3, he played a 4-2-3-1. There's a little bit of temptation to start Carvalho. I'll read the Bournemouth forums. Also, I was wondering whether I should start Ait Nuri instead of Gabriel. But like the clean sheet odds put me off because uh, Arsenal have 1.5 and Wolves have 1.13. That said, uh, shout out to Jazzy, my friend. Uh, he said that the Wolves forums, everybody's expecting them to play three at the back, which means that Ait Nuri should again be attacking in this game. Uh, he's not starting ahead of Mikolenko, who's got like a home fixture with a 24% clean sheet chance. And Arsenal have a 27% clean sheet chance, yeah? Arsenal, Arsenal, Arsenal. That said, how much of an impact will no Saliba have? Maybe I need to talk to the discorders. Uh, but that said, you actually, if you objectively think about it, Gabriel's set-piece threat is always there, irrespective, right? So that's where we are. And the last question is, do we triple captain Haaland? I'm captaining Haaland. Do we triple captain him? Now, this is the highest team goal projections compared to... And it's the same as City had against Ipswich, where Haaland scored four goals. So, is this a good time to play the triple captaincy chip? Yes. I have... If you're feeling it, do it. I will not stop you. I don't think form matters that much. The fixture is just too good. The manager is just too good. He'll figure it out. The team is just too good. So, I wouldn't worry because I think his minutes are great as well because the game after that is Spurs away, which is the Carabao Cup, where I think Haaland will be rested. So, I don't think I'm worried about his minutes here. There is a hat-trick there for the taking, if you're feeling it. Am I there? I'm 30% there. I'm not feeling it at the moment. I could feel it. If I do it again, deal on YouTube. I'll mention it in the comments and I'll pin the post. Nobody else has higher projections. Yeah? I mean, discuss this at length in the pod yesterday as well. So see what you feel about that discussion and see what you think about all our different... I think out of all the three of us, Pras is the closest to activating his triple captaincy chip, but he wants to see City's performance today. And like the team goal projections are accurate, man. Look at that. Arsenal, Liverpool, every time they even projected two plus goals, you're seeing four, two, three, two, only one blank. On every other occasion, you're seeing two goals or more. But the thing is, and cities, I don't, I don't think Leicester is as good a fixture as Southampton at home is or Ipswich at home is. That said, you don't have to just triple Captain Haaland. There's a part of me that's thinking that maybe some weather situation happens and I actually get a chance to triple Captain a premium player who has a double game week because we're probably going to have only two double game weeks next week, next in the second half of the season, maybe three if things go wrong. And are we using free hit there? Are we using bench boost there? Are we using the mystery chip there? We don't know. We just don't know. That mystery chip sort of screws up the planning in the first half of the season. But there's a part of me that wants to keep the powder dry. But like I'm talking to you guys and I'm looking at this table and it's like it's there for the taking, man. It's genuinely there for the taking. If you're feeling it, do it. If I feel it by the time Thursday, Friday comes around, I'll do it as well. That's where we are. That's it. Uh, just a quick shout out to Fantasy Football Scout. Uh, we use the tables and uh, charts on our videos and podcasts regularly. If you want to become a member, click on the link in the description below. And a quick shout out to Sleeper as well. Uh, they've started their pick and competitions for Champions League as well. And they're giving away amazing prizes up to $1,000 including PS5s, etc. as well. So, you know, scan the QR code, especially if you are you already have the sleeper app, and start making predictions for Champions League. At least that gives us engagement because I don't play UCL Fantasy. So it gives us a light-hearted way of engagement. You, Vinicius was amazing yesterday, by the way, in the Champions League. So quick shout-out to them. Uh, let me know which path you think I should go. I think, I think, old can reassess next week with greater information is the best way to do things because there are a lot of paths. Uh... We'll see. Actually, one thing I wanted to discuss that if I hold Kai and if I don't have him for this period and I don't have Saka for this period, is there a premium midfielder that's a, that has a good run? Salah has Southampton, City, Newcastle, Everton, Fulham, Spurs, Leicester, West Ham. It's a good run, man. I'll need to shift around funds elsewhere, but Salah's got a good run after City away. Son has a good run. Fulham home, Bournemouth away, Chelsea home, Southampton, Liverpool, Forest Wolves. The thing is, Watkins has a great run too. So do I want like Watkins plus Saka? 
But that means I need to downgrade elsewhere as well. Which isn't going to be easy because we are without rent also at the moment. Ah, tough. Reconsider, man. Just have to, I think, hold fire this week. That's it. If, I'll, I'll think about it harder if Saka is out. That's it, guys. Uh, this, is, this is just me thinking about my team. Let me know what you think about the video. Let me know what sort of improvements we can make about this video. Interact with me. I'll hope to re reply to all you guys. And uh, take care. Good luck. And see you next week. I think Zoff is recording his team selection video tomorrow morning. Russ is probably going to go tomorrow night or Thursday night. And you'll see content from us. Take care, guys. And uh, see you next week.